Anybody happy in the house tonight? Yeah. It's like almost everybody came back except for the ones that went on beach ministry. <laughs> what was that? I can, I'm sorry, I don't read lips. What are you saying? Huh? Oh, you were talking to her, not me. She was looking like right straight up here in the mouth. I'm like, the what? That's what you get for talking in church. You get called out. Oh, we got two families here tonight that were not here this morning. Who are you? Where are you at? Where are the, where the families at? Lift your hand real high. Thank you so Let's welcome them. Welcome them. Thank you so much for coming. You must have heard what a wonderful time we had this morning. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I'm just, I have, who would, who would like to know how many partners I have in the U.S. right now? Who would like to know? Zero. It'd be really cool to change that tonight. I just hadn't pushed for partners in a long time. And then, you know, when you're not traveling all the time, people drop off and drop off and whatever. And, and so, anyway, so, so we're believing, I'm believing God for um, a lot of partners. And so if you'd like to partner with us, I know you can't partner with every ministry that comes through here. Your heart may not be with what I'm doing. And you know what? That's cool. That's fine. God is my source. And I'm going to share some things with you tonight that I'm doing practically and just keeping focus with my faith and believing God. And, uh, and everything's coming in. Amen? In fact, I'm believing God for 5000 U.S. dollars before... I leave because that's the ticket, that's the visa, that's finishing up stuff here and getting stuff going there and so on and so on. I'm giving all of my household items away. I'm believing God to sell my truck. That's above and beyond the 5000 believing God to pay my truck off and I want to give it away. And just giving everything away. Well, why are you doing that? Because I want to bless somebody else and I want to get over there and start over fresh and just watch God provide every little bitty thing I need. I'm glad y'all are excited about that. I've heard about people doing this. I always wanted to do it. Never had the opportunity to do it. This is my opportunity. I'm doing it. It's what's in my heart. So here we go. Ready? Here we go. So uh, anyway, this is just real simple. It's one person with $5,000. There's five people with $1,000. is 50 people with 100 bucks. It's, it's 500 people with 10 bucks. You know, it's real easy. Amen? Everybody does their part, and we can get her done. Amen? And so, and then I'm believing God for a bunch of partners. And uh, I do have some partners over in Norway, but uh, we need to get some things cooking here in the U.S. as well, because I'm going to be ministering some back here. In fact, uh, oh, Lord Jesus, I just realized that uh, CTN has been waiting on my new CD that I just decided I'm not going to release and then I'm taking back. So they were waiting on my new CD, so they're going to have to wait even longer now until I get it done over in Norway. And that project is going to be uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty-five to 30,000 U.S. dollars. And that's cheap for Scandinavia. And that is going to be a really, really nice, smoking hot CD. Same songs except for two. Got to drop two, and so I'll replace those with two more, and we'll get that, that CD done. And uh, it's going to be a great blessing to a lot of people and, and uh, it's just this whole CD, the whole project from the get-go is just, it's been, for the most part, has been a fight. It's been stress. It's been crazy. It should have been released before I left in December. I finally got the files last month in May, and it still wasn't exactly right. I was just trying to push it through and just let it go anyway and just do another project later on. And the more I got to thinking about it, praying about it, and talking to my, my, uh, my guy over there. Thank you for posting that uh, photo on Facebook, Pastor. But anyway... <laughs> Look, uh, all those who watch our Roku and our um, streaming, and, and all, we have about 5,000 viewers right now. Easy. <laughs> so um, we, want you to, we, we want you to be able to give them. So I want you to give them your address. Oh, okay. So it'll go out right on, right on there, and they'll hear it and the so web forth. Address? No, where, how are they give to you? Oh, we can do that. Okay. okay, thank you so much. That's a blessing. Thank you. And uh, I was trying to like your post on Facebook right quick. So you can go to... That's funny right there. I don't care who you are. 
So I thought I closed that app. But anyway, you can go to KeithHolliday.com. You just have to spell holiday correctly. It's H-O-L-L-A-D-A-Y. KeithHolliday.com. There you can become a partner. It's just through PayPal. If you don't have a PayPal account, you just need a free email address. Set up your PayPal account. And then go back to my website and then set up the partnership thing. You can do it for whatever amount you want a month and forever how many months. And then uh, that will be a great blessing. If you want to send in the U.S., you can send a check made payable to KHM for Keith Holiday Ministries, not Kenneth Hagen Ministries. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, P, to P.O. Box 996, Commerce. Georgia 30529. Again, that's P.O. Box 996, Commerce, Georgia 30529. Thank you so much, Pastor, for making that available. That's a real blessing. And so, no pressure on anyone. My pressure's on the Word. That's where I put the pressure. I just let people know what's going on. If God puts it in your heart, then you just do whatever God puts it in your heart. If He doesn't put it in your heart, and if you choose you want to, you can. If you don't, it's, it's no problem. Amen? I believe I have it all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, y'all having a good time tonight yet? I wasn't going to share this, but uh, just kind of feel a leading in my heart. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. This is not one of those scriptures that one make you want to jump up and run around the room and shout and dance and go crazy. Turn to Matthew chapter 10, please. I got another message I think I'm going to preach, but I'm going to start with this. And we'll shift gears here in a little bit if we need to. I learned that from Brother Hilton Sutton. He was up at Pastor Mark Barclay's conference. December was a year ago. And in one message, in one morning or evening, whatever it was, he preached three different messages. He preached one message, and then he looked down to Pastor Mark Barclay. He says, I'm going to shift gears now. And he shifted gears and went to a totally different subject. Went for about another 20, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, ever how long it was. And he looked down at Pastor Mark and said, I'm going to shift gears again. And he preached a third, totally different subject. None of the three subjects had anything to do with anything. So I learned how to do that from Brother Hilton Sutton. So I'm glad I was there. So I may shift gears tonight, right in the middle of this, and talk about something totally different. But <clears throat> is that okay? Yeah. Good, I was going to anyway. <laughs> oh, well, let's see. <clears throat> Look at verse, um, verse 38, Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. This is a whole thing where Jesus is sending out his 12 disciples and, and just kind of laying some things out. And I just want to get to this point right here, verse 38 <clears throat> and verse 39. Verse 38 is, he, Jesus said, it's written in red, Jesus said, whoever does not take up their cross and follow me, it's not worthy of me. Well, that's pretty straight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whoever finds their life will lose it. That's what Jesus said. Huh? Yeah. Whoever finds their life will lose it. Yeah. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. That's what Jesus said. I didn't write this. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. He's sending out his 12 disciples. He's preparing them. And he's like, listen, if you want to get her done, you got to die. If you really want to live, you got to die first. Well, this is exciting, isn't it? I just look way deep down in your eyes and somewhere way deep down in there you're turning cartwheels and backwards flips and somersaults and all kinds of fun stuff, swinging from the chandeliers, some of you. Careful, don't swing out too far. If, if you really want to live, how many of you really want to live? <laughs> you know what's coming because there wasn't too many hands went up. If you really want to live, you got to die. What do you mean die? Now he's not talking about taking up the cross of sickness or poverty or any right. crazy stuff like that, that that's been taught over the years. That's a bunch of rubbish. Because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came to we might have life and have life more abundantly. More abundantly. Abundant life. I don't see anything 
any sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and craziness, and stress, and mess, and, and I don't see any of that in abundant life. All right, so don't come at me with that bunch of rubbish. Huh? Because that's all it is, is a bunch of rubbish. What he's talking about here is dying <clears throat> to our own selfish ambitions and desires and plans and thoughts and purposes and visions and dreams and all of that stuff. It's like, you know, Abraham had this, wanted a son. In fact, God spoke to him. And, well, I'm going to give you a boy. And so he set out on his own and, uh, and he got a boy. The boy's been called in trouble ever since. Right. And will be till Jesus comes. But that wasn't a promised son. You know what a lot of people leave out of that whole thing is, is, is God did speak in Abraham, or rather a, a blessing upon Ishmael. And Ishmael would be blessed. So we see Ishmael getting blessed and you've got to take that up with God because God said it would happen. Huh? Even though he wasn't the promised one. Huh? <laughs> been a lot of trouble, but he's been blessed. Huh? But God said he would be. Oh, that's another subject. We'll get to that another time. Now, <clears throat> then along comes Isaac. And Abraham's all excited about Isaac. But he was so committed to God. He so wanted to follow God's plan for his life that he was willing to take Isaac, the promised son, through whom the nations would come and nations would be blessed. He was willing to take Isaac and put Isaac on the altar and sacrifice him. God had to speak to him twice and then, of course, you know the story. God provided the ram in the thicket, and, you know, there was a provision. And, and there's a whole lot in that story that we're not getting out. But just the point that I wanted to get to was that Abraham died that day. Abraham died to his dream. That was his dream, to have a boy, the promise. He died to all of that. He was willing, actually himself, to offer his own son as a sacrifice. It was about six or seven weeks ago, I was home on a Monday. I was stressing about money. You say, but you're a preacher. You're a faith preacher. And you're stressing about money? Yeah. I'm a faith preacher, but I'm a human being too. Imagine that. <laughs> and I don't mind telling it. I was stressing. I was talking to Annette, my lady over in Norway. And by the time we got through the conversation, she was all stressed out. She was like, oh, Lord Jesus, help it. <laughs> so I spent some extra time. And what, 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 what do you do when, when there's not enough? You don't know what to do. What do you do? Good, somebody was listening this morning. You pray in the Holy Ghost. What do you do when there's more than enough? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He knows what to do when there's not enough, and He knows what to do with more than enough. So it becomes even more than more than enough. He knows what to do with anything. He knows what to do with nothing. I mean, when there's nothing available, He knows what to do. And all He needs is words. That's all he needed in Genesis chapter 1 was words. We're going to get to that in a little bit maybe. So I started praying in the, I was, just spent some extra time that week praying in the Holy Ghost. And by Friday, the Lord had put it in my heart to just get in my truck and just go. Having no idea where I was going. Just get in my truck, just take what I needed and go. And so I did. I took off. I was going to be gone for, I, I was going over to Mississippi to see my kids. I knew that. After that, I wasn't absolutely for certain what was going to happen. When I left, I had less than $200 between three bank accounts and the cash in my pocket. And I had gas, hotel, 
meals, offerings, and time with the kids and whatever else that we had to do, having no idea where any money was coming from. I had no income, no meetings, I had nothing. But in praying in the Holy Ghost is what I felt to do. Didn't make a lick of sense at all. How many of you agree that didn't make a lick of sense? Huh? Anybody think I, that's just, I mean, just humanly speaking, that just sounds pretty nuts. Anybody honest in here tonight that would agree with me? That just, that's nuts. Well, I was just nuts enough to listen to the Holy Ghost. I was gone for four weeks. It was in the first or second week of this journey that I realized what was happening. What was happening, and I'm still in that process now, what was happening in that is that Keith Holliday is dying. Keith Holliday entered into a process of dying to all of his dreams, to all of his visions, to all of his ways, to the old way of doing things. Dying to all of it. I don't mean dying physically. I mean dying to the old way of doing things. Does that make sense tonight? Yeah. I wanted to clarify that because I got my son sitting on the front row. My dad's dying? <laughs> no, not physically. He's dying to the old way of doing things. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> In fact, I'm doing quite well. I need to exercise a little more, get my endurance back up. But other than that, I'm, I'm doing well. But I know to go into what God has ultimately called me to do. Because quite honestly, for most of my life, I felt like a rat in a wheel, running. Sometimes so hard, and that thing was going so fast, I'm just flipping over and over and over as the wheel just keeps turning. Anybody ever felt like that besides me? Well, what do you do when you feel like the rat in the wheel and you're just flipping over all the time? What do you do? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody was listening this morning. You pray in the Holy Ghost. And then what do you do? Pray in the Holy Ghost. You do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. The Holy Ghost tells you to get in your truck and just take what you need and, and you hit the road. You get in the truck and you hit the road. And so I did. <clears throat> Very interesting journey how... I remember, I was driving into Fort Worth, Texas. I rode in just about on fumes. I knew I had a little bit of money left on my card, but my card would not work. For some reason, my card would not work in Texas. I had no idea how in the world I was going to get to the next place. And then, you know, then I, I wound up, it's a whole story, I, I landed at a place. Uh, I was going to Brother Rodney Howard Brown's meetings. I found out he was going to be in Fort Worth, and he was going to be at Pastor Bob Nichols' church. I thought, okay. I can go over there. That'll be good. And so I prayed about it. I felt like that was where I was supposed to go. And, and, but I had no idea where I was going to stay. By this time, I didn't have any money for a hotel. Well, okay, Lord, I need a place to stay in Fort Worth. And I thought about a friend of mine. I hadn't talked to him for several years. And we were friends on Facebook. So I looked him up. I sent him a message on Friday evening. I was supposed to be there on Sunday. Sent him a message on Friday evening. Hey, I'm coming to Fort Worth. Just uh, give me a call. So he called me on Saturday morning. I was at the hotel in, in Mississippi, and Alex was staying with me I, when I got the call. And uh, I said, I'm coming to Fort Worth. Brother Rodney Howard is going to be at Pastor Bob Nichols' church. And he said, hey, we just stayed 15 minutes away. I, mean, they, I knew they were in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex somewhere, but I had no idea where. And that's a huge area. Fif what are the chances? 15 minutes away. He said, hey, we got, we got a couple rooms here. Come and stay with us. You can stay here. You can, my wife will cook. You can eat here, and, and we'll take good care of you. Lord. Oh, praise God. Yeah. Seemed good to me and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, and the Lord provided. And I was about two days from when I was supposed to leave Fort Worth and go to wherever I was going to be going, and I didn't even have the money to get out of town. I talked to Annette on FaceTime. I said, I was supposed to leave here in a couple of days, two or three days, whatever it was. I said, I don't even have the money to get out of town, but that's okay. I'm not leaving town today. When it came time for me to leave town, I had more than enough to get out of town and get to the next place. And the Lord just kept providing through that whole thing. And by the time I came home, I came home with, with a whole lot more than I left with. Come on, God is good. But all of that to say this, I realized 
that whole thing, that whole trip was a process. Listen, if you really want to go to the next level, if you want to do something that you've never done before, you got to die. And let me tell you from experience, because I've been in this process now, I mean, more intense than ever in my life. I mean, I've gone through processes of, of dying and, and, you know, changes and so on, but nothing even close to what I'm experiencing right now. You with me? Amen. Nothing close. But if you want to, to get to the next level, you've got to go through that process of dying. So I've been in this process now for about maybe six or seven weeks, and I can tell you from experience, it is not fun. In fact, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, can I be honest with you? Is it okay? Uh, it's pretty straight. Are you sure? I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, we're talking about this dying process. I said, I'm telling you, this dying is hell. He said, yeah, but resurrection is sweet. I, can, we, can we please get to the resurrection part? <laughs> it would be nice. Real nice. If we could just get to the resurrection part. Can we skip all of this and get there? But no, you can't. I was talking to another friend of mine and, and telling them everything that was going on. They're like, wow, you're really getting through this process a lot quicker than I did. I was like, well, thanks for the encouragement, but it's still not fun. It's not fun at all. What really stirred all of this up in me was the last two songs. The Spirit of God. We talked about, let me get back to the lyrics. Where is it at? There it is. Spirit of God. I know your ways are higher than our ways. I know your thoughts are higher than any thoughts today. So I lay down my life as a living sacrifice. So Spirit of God, lead me into all that is right. The second verse. Jesus, you said you wouldn't leave us here alone. Aren't you glad he said that? Amen. You, we wouldn't have to spend a day all on our own. Aren't you glad that you're never alone? Yeah. I, I know there's times where you feel like you're alone. There may not be another human being around. You may feel like every human being on the face of the earth has totally abandoned you. But the Holy Spirit is still there. And if you keep praying in the Holy Ghost and keep listening to him, he, this is so important, he will bring the right people at the right time to come alongside with you to help you fulfill the destiny God has put in you. Listen, it is not just up to you to fulfill your destiny in your own strength, ability, knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Are you with me? If you could have done that, you would have fulfilled your destiny years ago. But it is impossible for you to do it on your own. So you just die to all of that. Just die. Every bit of it. Just take it all and put it on the altar. Every ounce of it. Die to it. Y'all ain't shouting tonight now, is you? <laughs> And so we thank you for the Holy Ghost and fire. Second half of the second verse of the Spirit of God. For holiness and purity is our greatest heart's desire. What he does when you pray in the Holy Ghost, when you really press into him and you go through that dying process, he'll find all the stuff. And let me tell you something. He's found some stuff in these last six or seven weeks. The worst of it at this point was this last Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, there was something came up in me and, and I was like, Lord Jesus. What is this all about? I didn't know what to do. I had to get some help. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm like, what do I do with this? And he put it in my heart what to do. And I called a certain person. Connected with them. They helped me through that process. 
See, the Holy Spirit will lead you in every step of the way. I'm talking about fulfilling your destiny in life and going to the next level and actually walking in the fullness of what God has called you to do. Anybody here tonight? But if you're going to walk in that, my friend, I know this is not shouting and dancing and running around the place, and, and this, this is my last shot here. I may never get invited back. I don't know. I may not ever have a chance to come back. I'm getting ready to move on the other side of the big pond. I ain't going to be on this side of the big pond much unless the Lord brings me back over here. So I don't know if I'm going to get to come back or not. I'd like to preach one of those messages where we're all shouting and dancing and running around the room. So you like me. <laughs> I would like you to like me before I leave tonight. But at this point, I'm concerned no one's going to like me. I'm concerned maybe I may not even like myself. <laughs> <laughs> but you go through that process of dying and Jesus said whoever finds their life will lose it friend if you're trying to find your life Jesus said you're gonna lose it quit trying to find your life just call upon the altar and die to everything Listen, friend, we've not even begun to tap into the potential that God put on the inside of us. Because most of us, if not all of us, have been doing, for the most part, our own thing. <laughs> you want to finish this one out tonight? Maybe you... <laughs> Doing okay? <laughs> we doing all right? Everybody doing okay? Might get a little bloody in here tonight. <laughs> it's not a fun process. I know. But if we really want to tap into the full potential of what God has in us, We've got to die to some things. See, last September, a pastor friend of mine blessed me with three nights in the cabin on the side of a mountain up outside of Franklin, North Carolina. Nice creek right out in front of the cabin. Oh, I could go there like right now. It was beautiful, peaceful. It was the creek flowing by, and you just, you just, every now and then a car drive by, and and then every now and then the rumble of a bad to the bone Harley. <laughs> but for the most part, it's just nice and quiet and peaceful. It's wonderful. And I had a pad and a pencil. I just started taking notes because I was pastoring a church. Um, I was, uh, of course, I got the ministry, Keith Holiday Ministries, traveling to the nations of the world, music and singing and so on, and then network marketing. I had some network marketing I was doing and, and, and had one that, was, that had the potential to, oh, don't even go there. Anyway, uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> network marketing is great if you're called to do it. I always see the vision. And I thought, oh, yeah, I can do that. But it has never worked for me because that's not the grace on my life. And you know what? I finally, at 45, I know I look 25, <laughs> but at 45, I finally gotten tired of doing things my way. I had so many things going when I went up on that mountain. I was so stretched, I felt like I was going to break and shatter into a million pieces. I know, I know none of you have ever done that. None of you have ever been that stupid. It's not you I'm concerned about. It's the person sitting next to you. <laughs> but I was stretched so far. I had no idea how in the world. What am I? What am I? I didn't even know what I was supposed to be doing. I had so much. Go and you know what? The, the, the purpose of all of it was good. Network marketing, I'm like, man, there's millions there. You know what I can do for the kingdom of God with millions? The vision, the purpose behind it for me was great. 
but it was not what I had in me. The church. I just love to help people. I love to help people. That's what it was all about, helping people. Man, if we can get this thing to grow and cook and we can help fund world missions and we can shake some nations and we can, it's all great stuff. But for me, it's not what I was supposed to be doing. And all of this came very clear. So the network marketing, that was easy. Just drop it. Just stop doing it. Just forget it. It's done. Pastor Hagen was preaching on a Wednesday night one time. How many is one of those pulpit smacking messages? He said, it is done. D-O-N. Done. <laughs> Network marketing was done. D-O-N. Done. Just don't do it anymore. <laughs> Love you, Pastor Hagen. <laughs> And so I told a little bit about the church, the whole story with that this morning. Like, okay, I really uh, don't need to be doing the church anymore. What's going to happen with the church? And that whole thing worked out. Philip Slaughter's there. I never in my wildest dreams did I ever think Philip Slaughter would come and pastor a church in Commerce, Georgia that I started. And neither did he. But he's there. He is such a pastor. It's almost ridiculous how much of a pastor he is. I mean, he is a pastor. I've been back a few times now and just seen him there and I was like, what have you been doing all these years? <laughs> He's an amazing pastor. Just a great gift to find what, what God's put in people and, and put them to work. And I'm telling you what, he's getting stuff done around there that I tried for almost nine years to get some of those folks to do something. They didn't do jack. I'm like, more power to you, brother. I'm going to Norway. <laughs> Love you. I'll be back to see you. God bless you. <laughs> it became very, very clear that I was to record and sing music and preach and go to the nations of the world. It became very, very, very clear. Now, so that's clear. Now, how do I get away from all of this that I'm doing and be able to get to the point where I can actually do that? What are you supposed to do when you get to that point? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody was listening this morning. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And as I've been praying in the Holy Ghost since September, all of this stuff has been working out. Okay, so then I had this opportunity to record a CD. Somebody blessed me with the production of a CD. And, and the, the, the... Jesus help us. The, the cover art is really nice. And the CD itself, I finally got the files last month. And I released it. I had, I had pre-orders dated back to the beginning of December. Because I was supposed to have it by the end of December. I didn't get it until May. And I went ahead and sent it out to the pre-orders. And I sold a handful to, in the meetings and stuff. But it just wasn't working. Because I was depending on that. I hadn't bothered to just travel and book meetings and, and raise support and all this stuff because I had a brand new CD coming out. The CD was, was supposed to fund everything I'm doing to get me over to Norway and pay all the stuff that I needed to do here to finish off to get over to Norway. Are you with me? All right, so I'm, I'm pushing to get this done. Did you catch that? I am pushing to get this thing done. And it's just been frustration. Finally, yesterday, I put it on the altar. Sorry, Friday night. Friday night, I put it on the altar. I mean, just from the standpoint of, as it is, I was going to, there was a, the, my producer over in Sweden I'm going to be working with had a guy that was going to master it. If you know anything about that, it was something that you do that makes it sound good. He was going to take it, work with it, and see if he could possibly fix it. And so I came here. I could have brought some of those with me, but I didn't bring them. There's two in my truck, actually, that I found. I need to just throw those away. Then I was talking to Steve, the producer there in Sweden I'm going to be working with. Is this okay? And we're talking about this whole thing. And finally I decided, 
I really would honestly be embarrassed for this, because this guy that, that does the mastering is, is, I mean, this guy is a who's who in the music industry zoo. I mean, this guy is huge, mega, big shot who would be hearing this. And the more I talk to Steve, I'm like, I don't think I want him to hear this because it's not mixed properly. Some of the recording is not good and it's just, there's this and there's that and da 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 And I said, let, let, me just, let me just get through all the details and just get to the point. I died to that whole thing yesterday. I died to it. That was supposed to be my main income source for the ministry. That thing was supposed to kick it and pay for everything. I put it on the altar yesterday. It's dead. It's over. It's done. D-O-N, done. <laughs> Does he ever watch these things? We will be both in trouble. Huh? Oh, I better stop then. I better stop. <laughs> Love you, Pastor Hagen. I died to the whole thing. Well, how's it all going to sort out? I don't know. What are you going to do? What do you think I'm going to do? Somebody was listening this morning. This will be the title of the message tonight. Somebody was listening this morning. I'm just going to keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Dying has been hell, but so necessary because what's, what I believe is happening is everything that I have aspired to do, is it, did I use that word right? It's kind of a big word for me. It kind of seemed right. It's close enough. I'm going to try it again. It kind of felt good. Everything I have aspired to do. Everything I've struggled to do for over 20 years, it looks like it's all falling right into my lap there in Scandinavia. But for me to get to that and really walk in the fullness of what God has for me, I've had to die to everything. I mean, this CD, you don't want to know the time and effort and travel expense and everything that has gone into the production of this CD. It was stress almost from day one. The whole process, the first conversation was back in September, maybe even August. I didn't get the files till last month. That's what, a lot of months. And then it wasn't even right. So what do you do? Just, just let it die. Whoever finds their life. I've been trying to find my life for years. It's like I've lost everything. Because I was in my own. Is it okay if I'm just, being, I'm just really being brutally honest and open and really putting myself in a very vulnerable situation tonight? Is this okay? Yeah. Dying to it all. I'm ready to live. Anybody in here besides me ready to live? Yes. Well, to live, you got to do what? You got to die. Whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. I really believe, I mean, I, I've never, ever, ever in my life have I had more confirmations about what I'm stepping into there in Scandinavia. Never, ever in my life. And I'm beginning to understand now why I've had so many confirmations. Because this last two months has been, especially the last couple of weeks, has been some of the most difficult times that I've had to walk through because I'm going through this whole process of dying. And I really pray that I'm getting at least semi-close to some resurrection. <laughs> yeah. 
And I've been praying the last couple of days, Lord, if there's anything else in me that needs to die, please, let's just let's get it done. I mean, we've come this far. No sense to turn back. <coughs> Amen? Amen? So what are you going to do with all the finances? Who would like to know? What, what am I, I going to do? Who would like to know? Yeah, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost, but I'm going to do some practical stuff we can do. Who would like to know? Good. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to shift gears now. But it still kind of fits, though. I mean, this is not a major shifting of gears like Hilton Sutton did. But it's close enough. <clears throat> oh, I need this. In the good old King James. Amen. Praise God. Amen. In the King James Bible. Actually, sorry, it's the New King James. <clears throat> now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <clears throat> I had a couple of years ago or so, actually it was, it's been a while back, it was 2007, I had worked that word evidence there. The Lord brought me some revelation and just uh, that, that this book right here is the evidence that we have everything that God made available to us through his great redemptive plan. This is the evidence right here. And, and we can take this evidence and work the evidence just like you would a crime scene. So when I preached this message, I created a, a, a crime scene on the platform. And I worked with the evidence that I found on that crime scene until I found the person who did that. It was kind of a funny process. I will, I've taken so much time with the other, I won't go through the, the details of that, but it was really funny. But I found the person who did the crime. I brought them into reality. When we take this book right here, this evidence, and we work this evidence... We find what we do is we bring into existence whatever it is that we're believing for. I know you know this, but it's all right. Somebody's going to get something out of this tonight. Now, I was listening to another brother who, who had worked the word substance. I had gotten revelation on evidence, but not substance. And he said this. He said, anything you write is substance. Anything you, you speak is substance. Anything you think your thoughts are substance. Anything I took at the XML, anything you type on a computer or iPad or whatever device is substance. And he said, if you work substance long enough, it'll transform from can't see to see. You get that? Okay, this means yes. This means no. And in India, this means okay. Do you get that? If you work this evidence, if you give this evidence substance long enough, it's going to transform from can't see to see. In other words, you're going to bring into existence what you don't see right now. Now look at verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that things which are seen are not made of things which are visible. What is he saying there? Everything you see, the Holy Spirit created out of nothing but the words that God spoke. You may be sitting here today and you might be to the point where you have nothing. There's nothing there. Nothing left. You have the words in your mouth. That you can speak. And when you speak this evidence, when you give this evidence substance, you're giving the Holy Spirit something to work with. Huh? It's all right so far? Now what I did is I put this together. You can go to KeithHolliday.com. H-O-L-L-A-D-A-Y. KeithHolliday.com. And you can go to the downloads, and you can download what I'm reading to you right now. <clears throat> I put this together. It's the end of 2007. Now, when I did this, <clears throat> I was leaving in February for India to do two crusades there, and the budget was about 15,000 U.S. dollars, and I had nothing. And I was quite honestly getting so stressed about that. I was losing sleep at night, stomach getting upset, and, and trouble with all kinds of stuff. It was not a good situation. So what do you think I did? I prayed in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I listened. I got four messages. 
And I started listening to him over and over and over and over and over. It's Dr. Leroy Thompson. You can say what you want to about the brother. I know he's extreme with prosperity, but you know what? I needed some extreme prosperity because I was in a very, very desperate situation. I didn't need somebody that's going to mamsy, pamsy, you know, maybe this is going to work, maybe it's not. Kind of. The, I needed somebody that has some confidence that what he's saying is true and walking in the stuff. So I downloaded four messages and I started listening to him over and I wouldn't listen to anything else during that time. I listened to him over and over and over. This is one thing he said. The spiritual substance from which comes all visible wealth is never depleted. The words in your mouth are never depleted. It is writ with me all the time. It is right with me all the time and responds to my faith in it and my demand upon it. Then I got eight scriptures. Philippians 4.19. I'm going to go through them really quick. You can... You can Download this exactly what I'm looking at. In fact, you can get iBook. I'm, I'm in an iBook on my iPad. You can download iBook and you can go to my website, keithholiday.com, and you can download this PDF file and open it up in, in iBook. And you can have it right there on your iPad if you have it, or your iPhone or your i whatever else i stuff you might have. Philippians 4.19, and my God, and I threw this in there just myself, my God, who is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, supplied all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Psalm 23.1, the Lord is my shepherd to feed God and shield me. I'll never lack another day in my life. 2 Chronicles 26.5, as long as I seek the Lord, he makes me prosper. 2 Corinthians 8.9, for I know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, so I don't have to be poor no more. Galatians 3.29, I belong to Christ, therefore I am Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Ephesians 2.10, in the Amplified, for I am God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ, born anew, that I may do those good works of God predestined and planned before him for me, taking paths which he pre prepared ahead of time that I should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for me to live. My favorite, 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has given me everything I need for life and godliness through my knowledge of him who called me by his own glory and goodness. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Whenever I say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and not doubt in my heart, but believe that those things that I say will be done, I'll have whatever I say. Philippians 4, 19, Psalm 23, 1, 2 Chronicles 26, 5, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, Galatians 3, 29, Ephesians 2, 10, 2 Peter 1, 3, Mark 11, 23, are the evidence that I have $30,000. Now watch this. I needed $15,000. But he's preaching one of those messages about he's more than enough. And I thought, well, if he's more than, en than enough, why am I calling in just enough? So I started calling in $30,000. Glory to God forever. Because I only needed $15,000. And then the very bottom it says, I believe I have $30,000 in Jesus' name. So I kept that, well. I printed it out, and I had several copies. I had a copy in my truck, I had a copy taped on my mirror. I taped another one up there just about a week or so ago. And I had another one in my office. I had, I had about three or four of them laminated and had them all over the place. And just throughout the day, I'd go through that thing. I wouldn't go as fast as I did then. I, I would take it slower because I wanted, to, I wanted those scriptures to speak to me. I wanted my my mind to focus beloved I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul, soul prospers what is the soul mind will and emotions I needed my mind will and emotions focused on God's word but this storm was raging around me so crazy I couldn't stay focused on God's word for one minute when I started this process. So I had to choose to make my mind focus. I would lay there in the bed at night and I'd be like, oh, and a thought would come to me, oh it's only so many days or so many weeks and now you gotta go and you don't have anything. What in the world are you gonna do now? I just lay there in the bed. Now, because you're videoing tonight, I won't do this because I might mess up the video. Because can you give me if I lay on the, on the thing here? Can you work with me? I'm gonna lay down on the platform. All right, here we go. You ready? Work with me. Here we go. <laughs> I lay down in the bed and I said, "And oh my God, who is El Shaddai?" The God who is more than enough 
supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And these thoughts are coming to my head. You need $15,000. You can't even pay your light bill. What are you talking about? I said, and my God, who is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, supplied all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And this thought was just going crazy, crazy thoughts in my head. I know my God, who is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Sometimes I'd lay there for, and I wouldn't say it out loud. I just said it on the inside of me, just under my breath. And because I didn't want to wake anybody else up in the house. My God, who is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Sometimes I'd lay there doing that over and over and over for 20, 30 minutes until I got to the point where I'd be in, My God, who is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. <laughs> I was meditating myself to sleep. Friend, that's how you meditate. Look in the Psalms and see how many times you said meditate. Day and night. Well, it was night. I needed to meditate. I wasn't sleeping. Might as well be meditating. So I was meditating. And my God, who is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough supplied all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I keep meditating till I fell asleep. And I stuck with it for about a month. After about a month, is this helping anybody? Yes. Y'all ready to go home? You had enough? Let me finish it? Yes. You sure? Yes. All right. About a month. Uh, see, I would talk to $30,000 like it was a person. I'd say, $30,000, you come here to me. You come here right now. $30,000, you get here. Come to me. $30,000, you come to me in Jesus' name. Come to me, $30,000. Come to me now. I'd go through the sheet. And then I'd talk to $30,000. You, you get over here. You get here to me now. I don't care where you come from, you just get here. In Jesus' name. Come here. I talked to it like it was a person. I kept doing this about a month. I'd pray in the Holy Ghost a lot. If I was up in the night, I, I was either doing this right here, or I was praying in the Holy Ghost. In the day, my mind would be going crazy. I just, I'd break away. I'd just, all right. The spiritual substance from which comes all visible wealth is never depleted. It is right with me all the time and responds to my faith in it and my demand on it. I go through all these scriptures. The evidence that I have $30,000 in Jesus' name. I believe I have $30,000 in Jesus' name. I just kept doing it over and over and over and over again. I pray in the Holy Ghost. What am I doing? I'm meditating. I'm making my mind focus on the evidence. All these distractions going on. I had people tell me, well, you know, you miss God. You missed the timing. You need to just do this. Somebody else can go to India. You don't have to go to India. But in my heart, I knew I was supposed to be there. I know I'm supposed to leave on the 18th of June for Norway. I don't even have my ticket yet. But I'm going. I will be on a plane to Norway on June the 18th, 2013. I have everything I need for the visa, all the paperwork, all the money, Everything, everything taken care of here, I believe it in Jesus' name. I have it. Are you with me? So I just stuck with it. Finally, after about a month, I'm driving down the road, and I was talking to $30,000. When I said, $30,000, you come to me in Jesus' name, it literally felt like something down inside me right here reached, came up and reached out and grabbed $30,000 and brought it to me. Then I prayed a little prayer. I said, okay, Lord, I know I have $30,000. Now, what I need to do to to convince my bank account I have $30,000. Holy Spirit down on the inside of me said, 
send an email blast. I'm like, do what? By the way, if you want to receive my email updates, you can sign up at keithholiday.com. I don't send out that many. Maybe one every three or four, five, six months. I need to get better about that, maybe. If I feel like the Holy Ghost is stirring me to do it, I'll send an email. If not, I don't. Anyway. He says, send an email blast. I'm like, okay, if you say so. <laughs> I guess you know what you're doing. As I sent the email, I get an email from a businessman who was in some of the smallest meetings I'd ever done at that point in Finland. Now this man sat there, and, and I mean, just very typical Finnish expression, which is no expression, just kind of. And didn't hardly move the whole entire service. I mean, people laughing, dancing, running around the place, falling in the floor, and he's just kind of sitting there. I didn't know he was a wealthy businessman. And that week, God put my ministry in his heart. And he, he said, I would like to know what this $30,000 is for. I said, okay, well, it's for the $15,000 for the Crusades and, and this and that and da 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 He said, okay, I am the personal guarantee you have the $30,000. I said, thank you, Jesus! <laughs> He said, but I don't do internet transactions. I want to send it directly to your bank. And I don't just give my banking information out to this anybody. So I called the pastor. I said, you know this man? Yes, I know him. Okay. Is he legitimate? Yes, he's legitimate. I said, okay, I'll send him my bank information. And that Monday, he transferred 12,000 U.S. dollars to my bank account. It hit, took, two day, took two days to actually get from Finland to, to, to the States. And it was in my bank by... Wednesday, I was able to go and paid for the crusades, all the travel expense, tickets, visa, everything. Come on, somebody. And the whole rest of the year, 2008, all I had to do when I got ready. See, now listen, you remember, I only needed 15000 but I was calling in 30000 I didn't realize what was going to happen the whole rest of the year. The whole rest of that year, when I was going overseas, all I had to do was send one email. And say, this is where I'm going, this is what I'm doing, and this is what the budget is. Within days, the money would be in my bank account. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Now, I did that. That time, I called in $30,000 alone, by myself. I had no one working with me. I had people fighting against me, in fact. Now I'm, I'm, I'm at it again. I'm calling in $10,000 a month for Keith Holiday Ministries. I got a couple of people that hooked up with me on it this time. I'm not by myself. And then before I leave, I'm calling in $5,000. You see, he's already given us everything we need for life and godliness. If there's something you need, all you got to do, baby, is call it in. But, but you got to... You gotta, <coughs> Got keep, I got a brother-in-law. He's, he's about as country bumpkin redneck as you can get. He says, you got to focus. Get your mind on it. That's what you got to do. You got to focus. Get your mind on it. Get your mind on it. Now focus now. You got to make your mind focus on the truth. If you need healing in your body, I got a confession sheet just like that I did for healing. It's on the website. You can download it. And just make your mind focus on that. Don't let your mind get off on all kinds of crazy stuff. Because the problem, the problem is not your spirit. The problem is not God. The problem is not God's word. The problem is your soul. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul. soul. What is the soul? Mind. Will. Emotions. That's where the problem lies. And you can make your mind focus. Get your mind on it. Focus, baby. And whatever you need is already there. It's already available. And a distraction will come. I promise you a distraction will come. It might mean turning the television off, not watching your favorite series, uh, getting off of FaceTime or Twitter or YouTube. Did y'all hear, by the way, that YouTube, Twitter, and FaceTime are about to merge? Did y'all hear that? 
The name of the new company is going to be You Twit Face. Anyway, I just needed to lighten it up a little bit. It's been a heavy night. I needed to lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> I had a Norton just left the room on that one there. No, he's still here. He likes a good laugh every now and then. He's got to to put up with me. Did this help anybody tonight? Yes. Friend, I don't know what you may be facing right now in life. Some of you may be some difficult things. I've, I've faced a few difficult things. <laughs> I mean, quite a few in the last two and a half years. And now, at 45, starting over with whatever I can get in my suitcases to take to Norway with me. That's what I'm going with. I don't know where I'm going to be living. I don't need the place right now. Why do I need to know? I don't need to know. I'm not there. When I get there, all that will sort out. I'm learning not to stress and worry about stuff. You say, you stress and worry about stuff? I'm a human being. I, I get goofy every now and then. I don't always, but I have my moments. And you know what? If you have a moment, have a moment. And don't think that God falls off the throne when you have a moment. For crying out loud, have a moment. Just get it out of your system. Have a moment. If you need to call somebody up that can handle it, call them up and have your moment. Get through it. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. For those of you who don't understand redneck. <laughs> Am I going to get invited back ever again? Okay. <laughs> Listen, friend, if you don't quit, you do get through it. Because everything you need, every, everything you need to speak to that mountain you're facing right now, everything you need to accomplish what is before you is already in you right now. You don't have to convince God to do anything else for you. There's nothing else for Him to do. He did it all in Jesus 2,000 years ago. You don't need to do anything else for you. You just need to focus. Get your mind on it. And don't quit. If you need some encouragement, find somebody that will encourage you. And surround yourself with the right people. If you're going through a dying process, just keep going. 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 Pastor, come here. You and your lovely wife. Come. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I don't have a clue what's going on. I don't know what you may or may not be dealing with. It's none of my business. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Stop trying to figure it out. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. He already knows what's going on. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you may be going through a dying process too. <laughs> yeah, it's dying to the old way of doing things. And stepping up to a higher realm, a higher level even higher responsibility but yet higher reward higher productivity more effective for the kingdom of God mm. thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus just speaking to you tonight yeah 
Let's keep going. 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 Hey, just take off and run around the room right quick. Go f chase him. Go chase him. Go, girl. You can do it. I just got that look like, please don't make me go again. <laughs> Was it that bad? <laughs> I'd about put the pastor asleep on the front row down here. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand. I ran the other day for the first time in a while. I only did four of my six sprints, and I promise you, I almost tossed my cookies and passed out all at the same time. It took me about 30 minutes to recover from that. I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. I had to go lay down. I hadn't ran in a little while. God is good. God is good. Amen. Amen. Did y'all get blessed tonight? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anything else I need to do? I'm not necessarily asking you. I'm asking the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am aware of the time. There's a big old clock right back there in that room. I've been watching for a little while. I'm aware of the time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I don't want anybody to feel pressured to do anything because you're not my source. I threw out some numbers tonight. I don't always do that, but I did. So you know what I'm believing God for? Nothing else. You can hook up with me. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Call it in. $5,000, you get to Keith Holiday Ministries' bank account in Jesus' name. Amen? $10,000 a month. The Lord might speak to you to partner with us. If he does, great. If not, in fact, can, would it be okay if I, I just happen to think I've got my business card, some business cards, but can I just pass it out? Would that be okay? I mean, I should have not asked that publicly. Because what are you going to say now? No? Uh, well, hey, there's a concept. If I don't forget, I'll take them and put them on the table back there. And it's, just, it's got the church on one side and the minister on the other side. Forget the church side. And just the, the website there, KeithHolliday.com. Go to the ministry site. No, the church that I just, because I don't pastor the church anymore. It's the church that I started in my hometown. Re, re, remember, remember your church, okay? Please do remember. Do not forget your church. Remember your church. But my church in Commerce Church, it doesn't even go by that name anymore. He changed the name of the church and everything. So... That side of the card, just disregard that, but the ministry side, KeithHolliday.com, you can take that to remind you to pray for the ministry and what's coming up. And let me just, I didn't really say a whole lot about what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be going from there to the nations of the world, of course, but we're going to be doing concert tours, and we're going to be going outside the four walls of the church, going into places where there's people, thousands of people, and we're going to go in with quality music. Now, it's possible you may hear all kinds of rumors that will be flying around because not everything we're going to be doing is Christian music. <laughs> we're going fishing. We're going to put some bait on the hook that the fish are going to bite. Are you with me? But well, by the time all is said and done, I promise you the love of God is going to come in that place and be sitting right on their lap and they will not be able to resist the love of Jesus in that place. We'll be doing concert tours in, in churches and everything as well and Christian events and whatnot, but there's a lot of things happening. It's just, I really don't know everything that's going to be happening. I'm kind of clueless to be honest with you. I just know that this is where I'm supposed to be going and so I'm going. And uh, good enough. 
continue praying in the Holy Ghost and do exactly what he says to do. So I'm going to grab some of the cards and I'll put them back on the table. And you can take one of those when you come by and buy a set of my CDs. And, and you buy all the disciples' crosses that I made and the other little doodads that they're, they're just a dollar. Say a dollar. dollar. Little pocket crosses and the little fishies are just a dollar. Look at your neighbor and say dollar. 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 <laughs> dollar, dollar. And uh, if you want to partner with the ministry, we welcome you to do that. I thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. I trust you have been blessed. Amen. And uh, I've had a good time. Have you had a good time? Yes. Are you just saying that to be nice to me? <laughs> no, I'm just messing. Pastor, thank you so much. Love you, man. Love you, too. Appreciate the opportunity. Love you guys. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, how many got, I, now, listen. This is one of those things you kind of go sit and go, okay. You know, we, we don't always like to hear the stuff that makes you change and makes you grow. We like to hear the stuff that makes you run. But the things that make you change and make you grow are necessary. Amen.